Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. Welcome to a brand new series on my channel about Toyota hybrids. In this series, we're going to go over the whole hybrid cars from beginning to end to everything, every single system, how it's different than your uh, average car, how things have slightly evolved since a uh, 55 Chevy. Well, I guess even gasoline cars have evolved since the 55 Chevy, but Hybrids are pretty different and people often start watching videos and uh, they get lost after five minutes. I'm supposedly trained at the factory and I get lost after five minutes. They're very complicated cars. However, the theme of this series will be simple but complicated. We're going to keep complicated things simple so we can all watch this easily, understand how our cars work and just have a glimpse of this awesome technology which I want to give a huge shout out to all the engineering department at Toyota that made this system possible and if, if initially they were the laughing stock of the automotive business back when the first generation Prius came out and guess who's laughing now. But before we get started with part one which we will cover the high voltage battery consider subscribing to the channel if you're new if you're a returning subscriber thank you for watching give this video a thumbs up Make sure you subscribe for the following parts of this series and without further ado, let's dig right into it. So right here is the coveted high voltage battery, also called traction battery, HV battery, big expensive break my bank battery, however you want to see it. Now let's start with the basics. I want you to get the point of how this whole thing works. Now most people assume that this is the heart of the hybrid system. It actually is not. It is just a battery and a lot of additional stuff around it that controls it and, and helps it stay long and not break your bank too early. Now, hybrid Toyotas had two style batteries. There is the nickel metal hydride, which is the old stuff. This is what they started with. It was great. It was reliable, if taken care of. They last a good time. However, this right here is the newest stuff. This is a lithium ion battery. It's lighter weight. It has better life. It's, it's a lot more compact and it allows them to put this battery underneath the seat, not even affect the space, not even affect anything. So, hybrid batteries, how they work. You got small battery cells. Just imagine your AAA batteries, just on a massive, much more massive scale. You put a bunch of little battery cells and then they're all connected in series to produce the voltage that we want from the battery. Let's say each battery is five volts. We have 10 batteries, now we have 50 volts. That's the basic concept of how this thing is arranged. That's why you will hear battery stack or battery cells. Every cell essentially just imagine this as a triple A battery just right next to each other and they're all connected together. Now each battery will vary each by model how many what's the total voltage of each each battery this battery is right around just over 200 volts the lithium ion batteries they have a slight different design than the old one the old one just had huge stacks running across and everything was nice and simple the lithium ion it has two blocks each block has a series of of cells i'm not an engineer and we're carrying the the theme of this series is simple but complicated, but we're gonna stick with the simple part. There's two stacks, that's how they designed it. We're not gonna get into that, we just wanna know how this thing works. So there's two big stacks, you can see them. One is here, one is right here, and there's cells. I'm gonna go over an aerial view so you can actually see everything inside. Once, once I'm done, you are yabbering a little bit. So the basic, how, hybrids come on let's focus on that because it starts with the battery actually when you press that innocent button that starts the car 
Most people assume, well, the engine is gonna crank and life will come on. You know hybrids don't do that. There's no engine start. And most hybrids have such a small 12 volt battery. Most people complain, why is it so small? Why is it always dying? Well, here's why. The only thing that happens when you press that start button is hybrid computer comes on, hybrid computer communicates with another computer here, which is the battery computer. It's actually right here. What that does is, hey, buddy, loose nut behind the wheel wants to go. Let's ready the system on. In turn, this computer is going to command two relays that are right there. And I will show you that in a bit when we get to the aerial view. It commands two relays. These relays are called system main relays. Hey, buddies, we need to come on, but we need to do our safety check. These relays, there's two relays because one is for the positive side and one is for the ground or the negative side. The relays will come on. And you notice when you start hybrids, you hear a bunch of clicking from usually from the back. It's actually these two relays. They will come on, then shut off, and then come on again. And the reason it's doing that is it wants to check that high voltage wire. There's a high voltage wire, the, the final output, if you would, that goes from the battery all the way to the front to a lot more fancy components that we will talk about in future videos. It checks that wire. Is that wire broken? Is more important, is the insulation on that wire broken? Imagine if you have that wire that has 200 volts on it, just cut and touching the body of the car, which is all metal. Now that's very dangerous. So what it does is it checks that wire. Is the insulation on that wire good? That's why it turns on, then it turns off, then it turns on again. It does all that in a split second. So now you know what that clicking sound you hear when you start your hybrid. You hear click, 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 click. Like you actually hear four clicks. You should hear four clicks, I hope you do, but it's so fast, you might not even notice that they're four clicks because they come on, go off, and then they come on again. That's the gist of this. Once it checks that everything is good, high voltage battery comes alive, sends high voltage to the component that is called the inverter. The inverter takes over. At this point, the, you could take the 12 volt battery, throw it to the garbage. It's irrelevant at this point. That's all it does. That's why they put such a small 12 volt battery in these things, because once this guy comes alive by these two relays coming on, now the high voltage system is actually charging the 12 volt battery and it becomes irrelevant. So why put a giant, why put a giant 12 volt battery? There's no need for it. That's why you do not want to jump your, your other gasoline car from your hybrid because all you're doing is you're putting a huge strain on a system that is not designed to run a starter. And we will get to that when we talk about the inverter. So this is the basic function of the battery. That's all it does. I know it's simple, but complicated. It's a lot more complicated than that. I know somebody will come in the comments and say, hey, but it does it. We're not interested in that. We're not gonna take these things and re-engineer, re-split the atom. We just wanna know how this works in simple terms. So, one more thing, and I have said this in every single video that has the word hybrid next to it. The fan, cooling fan, we always talk about the filter and how important it is that you clean that filter and that every, this is like the lifeblood of this, of this battery. Here's why. There's the fan. The fan blows air actually underneath the battery in this in this battery it varies by design but let's talk about this battery and most of them are the similar concept if you would it's going to blow air underneath this battery and as it's going underneath it, it's going to pass in between all the battery cells cooling them down then finally it comes up these two tubes right here which i will show you when we get here that's the exhaust, the hot air comes out outside the car. You notice that it takes air inside the car because you might, if it's a hot day, you have air conditioning running and then it exhausts the hot air out, out of the car. That's why in hot when, summer, you might want to have the AC on and don't just go no AC because that thing is actually taking AC, 
like air conditioned air from inside the car to cool this guy up. This guy gets hot, it gets upset, things start going south. Now the way the way the computer knows that this guy is is getting hot, it has a series of temperature sensors spread across it. It measures the temperature at all areas of the battery. When the temperature starts going up, it kicks the fan higher. When the temperature is too low, because that's also not good for the battery, it actually could shut it off completely or run it really lightly until the temperature goes up. It, it wants to see the temperature in a specific zone. That's the happy zone for this guy. And that's where it's gonna keep it, always. So uh, that pretty much wraps it up for this battery. It's pretty simple. Be careful, you see the sea of orange wires here. This is where it all is. This guy is called the service plug. This disconnects, this breaks the circuit of the battery. Okay, so most people say, well, if I pull this off, now the series circuit is broken. Now there's no longer voltage flowing. But that's not the case because first, this effectively breaks the circuit, disconnects the battery from the rest of the car. But if you're inside, working inside the battery, and you happen to, let's say, connect the circuit with your body, things are gonna get pretty ugly. Someone will say, well, it's not that. It's dangerous. There is so many scary warnings here, and I'll put some of them up so you can see what they say. People, this is not the place to be DIYing things inside here. If you're gonna replace a high voltage battery, you gotta be very careful. You gotta know what you're doing. And whatever happens, do not disassemble this. Even when you buy this, it comes sep It does not come, oh, here's three cells from Toyota. We're just gonna yank them out and replace them. That's not how this works. Let's talk about what happens when these things fail. Now, how does a computer know it fails? Well, the computer is, is monitoring and it has voltage sensors for each cell. It's monitoring each, each individual cell. You remember the cells we talked about? It's watching each cell. What's the voltage of that cell? Now, voltage, of course, will go up and down slightly, but what the computer is looking at is, is there a difference between the cell's voltage? And there's so much, if there's so much difference between them that it doesn't like, shut down, battery failed, it's gonna turn on the Christmas tree on the dash, you need a new battery. And the infamous code is replace hybrid battery pack. That's literally, that's all it says. And you go look at the black box data, if you would, it's called freeze frame. You'll see that one battery cell just drops significantly. And it doesn't take much. On some models, and don't quote me on this, it's a difference of 0.1 to 0.3 volts. 0.1 to 0.3 volts. That's, that's how accurate these things need to be. Anything drops below that, you're gonna have a problem. That's why I, I always say, don't store these cars for a very long time. What happens is one cell drops a little bit because it's been just sitting. And that's all it takes for these batteries to throw a code. And by the way, yes, these batteries can be recharged. It's just a battery. All Toyota dealers will have a giant battery charger that is capable of charging these guys. It's very expensive, it's very dangerous. However, it's possible. And most dealerships will not accept this, but most of these batteries, if you charge them, sometimes you can bring them back to life, if you would, for a short, mo for a short time, but you could actually bring them back to life. But because of liability, because of you know, warranty and all this stuff. Most dealerships don't do this. Pretty sure there are aftermarket solutions for charging this battery, but just be careful. Whatever you do around these batteries, be careful. Now, let me take you on an aerial view of how this looks. I'll kind of walk the camera over it so you can see everything and I'll point a few things along the way. All right, let's start our aerial view. So first component, this is gonna be your hybrid fan. See the fan right there? I'm using a plastic pry tool because just safety. So here's your fan. You see how the duct goes inside, goes underneath. Now, right here is a junction block. This is the first relay. 
and this is the second relay. And this is actually a pre-charged resistor on the third gen Priuses. This was common to develop a crack, and now we have a problem. So after the junction block, there's a lot of wires going on and a lot of orange goodness. Here's the two stacks. Here is one, starts right here, ends here. Here's another one. Do you see these green guys? These are the cells. The cells are actually connected right here below these covers. I am not going to remove the, co the covers because I do not have the gloves with me. And uh, this gets pretty dangerous, so I'm not gonna do that. Here's the first warning. I don't, I'll put a picture of that so you can see it. And there's another one right there. Part of my camera fell off. Even my camera is worried. So here are all the stacks. Let me take you over to the other side so you can see the rest of it. Here's the other side. Here's that exhaust that we talked about for the fan. And you see these two vents, they're open vents. This is where the air, there's a cover that sits on top of this, of course, to seal it all. And the air will pass through the cells and go out of the exhaust and go out. Now, here's the rest of it. This is where the hybrid battery computer sits. You notice that there's orange wires and there's also a low voltage wire right here. This is just communication wire with the front. So there you have it, guys. Here's a high voltage battery in all her glory. One more thing I will add. Here is that uh, service plug. Here's where it goes. I did a video on how to service the filter on this, on this battery. You actually see that plug plugged in right, right next to the fan filter on this 2021 Corolla or 2020 Corolla. Also another thing, see this little clip right here? This is a very specific clip. This clips the cover on this battery to the battery and, and this clip sits there. Now per Toyota, this is how you know if the battery's been opened or not. These clips are kind of rough to take apart and most aftermarket servicing places will just yank these out and throw them. They don't really do anything. I mean, this cover is bolted on, so this little clip gets thrown out all the time. That's how you know if this battery is original or not. They're kind of finicky to take apart. Now this one I was able to take apart. It took me a while, it was a little bit of a pain, but that's how you know, just an additional tip for you. Well, there you have it, guys. This is part one of this series. We're gonna conclude this part right here on the battery. In the following parts, we're gonna be talking about the true heart of the hybrid system, which I think that it has two true hearts of the hybrid system. First, the inverter, which basically controls everything and it, it does so much, it's really the true heart of the hybrid system. And then the most important one is the transmission. Is it a CVT transmission? Not exactly. And we're gonna talk about that in a future video. So, so you won't miss those videos. Consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you learned something new. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll see you in the next episode of this video.